So I worked closely with the EPA and the U.S. Forest Service and many environmental organizations, and it became very obvious to me that they really weren't, they weren't interested in protecting the environment. They were interested in advancing an agenda. They cooked this up 40 years ago, really 100 years ago, but it went into full force 40 years ago. Glaciers always come out to the sea and break off. The glaciers are actually getting thicker. Uh, you know, airplanes in Greenland from World War II are now under like 50-something feet of ice, you know, uh, that uh, crash landed there, take an elevator down to it. But they don't care. They just show you polar bears on an ice float and say, look, they, they're going to drown. It broke off. That was actually on the news last year. Polar bears can swim 300 miles. They only, they only like to swim 150. And they go out on ice flows uh, and uh, they, they hunt on them and then they grab beluga and eat them and then swim back to shore 100 miles. Polar bears can swim. They're the best, the best swimmer that's a non-reentrant. And uh, but they tell our kids they can't swim. And uh, research shows that much of Greenland's interior ice cap is growing, and only its edges are melting. We carried out analysis of the results to see what happened when we recompiled the data, and got quite different answers. Instead of having a extraordinarily high 20th century, we had a 15th century value that was just as high as the 20th century. The actual wildlands project itself uh, that I fought back in the 1990s calls for the reduction in human population of 80 percent in the next 50 years. They don't say how to get there, although they do make it very clear that they would probably do it through agricultural means. They really truly believe that if fertilizers and so forth cause ecological destruction because they believe that, then we must reduce the use of fertilizers and it's fertilizers and genetic improvement and so forth that have caused the green revolution that fed the world from the 1960s on. If we eliminate that, we'll only have food production enough for about a third of the global population that we have today. CO2 is something the plants love. They take up CO2, they use it, they give out oxygen. We take the oxygen and give out CO2. So it's hardly a pollutant at all. It's quite a naturally occurring gas that appears in our atmosphere and is very important to sustaining life on this earth. They said 40 years ago they would have taxes on carbon dioxide. First in the 60s, the Club of Rome said, we'll claim there's going to be an ice age if they don't restrict it. And when you find out that Al Gore and the rest of them, whether they believe it or not, the top scientists above it know what they're doing, and when you read the actual UN, Club of Rome, Bilderberg Group documents about how they cold-bloodedly are setting up this tax, you realize they're doing nothing about all the serious environmental problems we face, and they're simply giving us a solution that is a fraud. Increased CO2 worldwide, with few exceptions, means plants grow better, period. One of the things that Carol Quigley, one of the foremost historians of the 20th century, said after going through all the documentations of the global elite for at least two years, said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, towards the end of the 20th century, the expert will replace the democratic voter in control of the political system. He said, calculations of the future and how to modify it are no longer considered to be an obscure academic pursuit. Long-range planning and implementation of plans will be made by a technological scientific elite this will strain the democratic fabric to the ripping point as more and more enjoyed a varied, leisured, and guaranteed sustenance. Most people will tend to be hedonistic, and a dominant elite will provide the bread and circuses to keep social dissension and disruption to at a minimum. A small elite will carry society's burdens. The resulting impersonal manipulation of most people's lifestyles will be softened by provision for pleasure-seeking and guaranteed physical necessities. The controlling elite will engage in power plays largely without the involvement of most of the people. The society will be a leisurely one. People will study, play, and travel. Some will be in various stages of the drug-induced experiences. Each individual will receive at birth a multi-purpose identification. Each individual will be saturated with ideas of information. Each will be self-selected. Other kinds will be imposed overtly by those who assume the responsibility for the other's actions. Relatively few individuals will be able to maintain control over their opinions. Most will be pawns of competing opinion molders. Too many kids are what's making the planet worse. Andrew Refkin is the author of The North Pole Was Here. He is the science and environmental writer for the New York Times. So there is a legitimate concern about population growth in this equation, but the question is what do you do about it and not have real problems? The, the environment in so many different areas is being uh, 
uh, the pressure being put on it by the ever-increasing number of people and the number of people using more stuff and more energy, that's what's uh, leading to global climate, climate change. Meanwhile, a $5,000 baby tax to help save the planet, that is what a doctor in Australia is proposing. He wants to slap parents with that tax for each newborn they have after their second child. The negative impact of population growth on all of our planetary ecosystems is becoming appallingly evident. The time for debate is over. I think what you have to realize is that being environmentally sensitive and making money aren't mutually exclusive. There's a lot of money to be made in, 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 in addressing this issue. But you guys are gobbling up all the world's concern to just simply line your pockets and make kids read your book in schools and do all this. It's a business just like you said, Rothschild. It's not. Do you think I make any money out of this? It's the same thing. It's the same thing your great, great, great grand, your, your money changing ancestors did. A pollution based tax system, principally CO2. We're causing it mainly, the vast majority of it. The consequences are bad and will be catastrophic unless we act. Uh, the polar ice caps of Mars have, are receding at several miles a year, much faster than ours and that the moons of Saturn and Jupiter are melting. In fact, several of their moons were ice and are now liquid seas. Now, how are SUVs causing that, David Rothschild? That's because those planets are closer to the sun, my friend. <laughs> no, um, Jupiter yeah. and Saturn are not closer to the sun, neither is Mars. Yeah, sir. They put out big announcements. Every scientist on Earth knows man-made global warming is real. And then thousands of scientists go, I was put on that list, I've never even contacted them. But see, they know the general public doesn't read these books. You know what these books and other books say? You know what Bilderberg documents we've gotten out say? You know what North American Union SPP documents say from last year? They say, man-made global warming is not real. We're telling the people it's real so that we can set up global carbon taxes to control human activity. The globalists print the money, they don't need money. They don't get the taxes and new controls. The sustainable goal is the elimination of the middle class. The world cannot support six billion people. But you see, the plan behind sustainable development includes population control. It's a program for land use control, education control, and population control. The leaders of the sustainable movement say that the world's human population should not exceed 500 million people. That's a 93% reduction of today's population levels. Put a price on the carbon. If there were a carbon-based tax. Plants breathe carbon dioxide. They've done ice core studies, hundreds of universities. The earth is at a very low level for carbon dioxide and oxygen. It's carbon dioxide and oxygen starved right now. So what do they do? They come in and declare that a life-giving gas is a poison because it's what animals expel in our respiration, it's what plants breathe, it's attacks on life, on a human footprint, on our lives. We find the following statement, Richard and Haas, in searching for a new enemy to unite us, we must come up with the idea that population, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by the human intervention, the real enemy is humanity itself. And then the head of the CFR, goes on, they're eugenicists, see, and they openly say they want 80% of us dead, and they say they hate the middle class, and they hate you living in that million dollar house, and they hate the fact that your kids look great and you got money in swimming pools. These are some real Scrooges, folks.